So this project is really looking at how sexual assault survivors process pain and how they experience pain itself. So we found participants from the Oklahoma Study of Native American Pain Risk, that's the OKSNAP OK study that was done here at TU, and we found three groups of people. One was a group of people who've experienced a sexual assault, so those are sexual assault survivors, both males and females. We found one group of people who experienced trauma, but they did not experience a sexual assault. And then we found one group of people who have never been exposed to a traumatic event before. And we looked at how they performed on an experimental pain paradigm. So we had participants come into a laboratory at the University of Tulsa, and they underwent a pain task within our laboratory called the Conditioned Modulation of Pain Task, or the CPM task. And this task is really looking at how pain inhibits pain. So what we did was we had participants come in and they got hooked up to some physiology sensors and we had them place their hands in cold water and experience electric stimulations. So very brief shocks that feel kind of like a pin prick or a carpet shock. And this was really to see how their body processes pain and our laboratory also allows us with our physiology signals to evaluate nociception or the neural signals that actually encode pain itself. So what we found was that for everyone in the study, their pain inhibited their pain. So that's what we would expect. So that means that the pain from one stimulus actually lessened the pain from the other stimulus. But when we looked at the nociception or those neural signals that encode pain, we found a different story. When we looked at people who've survived a sexual assault, we found that their body actually sent more nociceptive signals. So they had greater nociception. They had more signals that encode pain going up into their body than the other two groups. And this could place someone at risk for chronic pain because the way that their spinal cord and their body, that cerebrospinal circuitry, might not be able to turn off pain signaling when it needs to in an appropriate way. This has some really exciting implications in the treatment world for how we can treat sexual assault survivors who are experiencing pain. Because this is suggesting that they may be great candidates for something like psychotherapy, specifically cognitive behavioral therapy. Because there's actually data out now that says that cognitive behavioral therapy, a brief psychological intervention, can actually retrain someone's body and their cerebrospinal circuitry to regulate pain in a more appropriate way.